So in my first video on Euler, I told you that he was the most prolific mathematician who's ever lived. Okay, and I want to give you an idea of the amount of work he actually did and the kind of work he did. Okay, so it's estimated that he produced somewhere around 80 or more volumes of work. Okay, and this is a mix between mathematics and physics. Okay, and each each volume contains between 250 and 500 pages. Okay, so this is between 20,000 and 40,000 pages of math, which is an absolutely incredible amount of work. Okay, and like I said, nobody really compares to Euler on the amount of work at this kind of quality. So, let's take a look at the different kinds of work he's done through his life. Okay, so like I said, it was mostly in mathematics and in physics. Okay, and he made huge advances in geometry. Okay, and analysis, if you're not familiar with this, is things like calculus and studying the infinite. Things like the Basel problem would fall into this. Okay, and then number theory would be another example of the Basel problem, basically just studying the properties of numbers. Okay, we would consider number theory to be the most pure subject in essentially all of academia. Okay, uh, I believe it was Gauss who said, if math is the queen of the sciences, then number theory is the queen of mathematics. So we consider this the most pure subject, and then on the applied side is physics. Physics is, you could think of it as applied mathematics in some ways. And he was really big into astronomy, calculating orbits of comets and asteroids and that sort of thing. He was also really big into fluid dynamics, which is studying the motion of water you know, or any other kind of fluid and how it moves. Okay, and then Optics is interesting because Euler was blind and he was explaining the properties of light to us. Okay, and then you come down to mechanics. Okay, and mechanics you could think of as the most applied field of physics, or at least of mathematical physics. Okay, so I point this out because Euler studied the most pure subject and he studied the most applied subject. Okay, so this shows how varied his knowledge was. Okay, he really touched on everything in mathematics. And to give an example of mechanics, you can think of your car. Your car runs based off of the properties of mechanics. And number theory, like for instance prime numbers, is at the heart of number theory. So for most of time our study of prime numbers was fairly impractical. We didn't have an immediate use for them. And so we have always categorized them within number theory. Okay, number theory, for the most part, a lot of the stuff in number theory doesn't have an immediate use. And it might be, you know, years or centuries down the line when we find a use for a lot of this stuff. Okay, and it was only recently that we found a, a use for prime numbers in finance. Okay, essentially, you use really large prime numbers anytime you make a transaction using your credit card or you do online banking the information is encrypted and essentially coded or protected using really large prime numbers so nowadays they have a practical use but all throughout history they pretty much didn't okay so Euler studied all of these fields and more okay these weren't the only fields of math or physics that he studied these are just the main ones okay and one great fact about Euler is his memory, okay? He was known to have an enormous memory. Okay, and one thing he knew very well was prime numbers. Okay, and he could remember the first first 100 by heart. Okay, and it wasn't just those those numbers because that on its own is not that impressive, but it was also their second, third, fourth, fifth and their sixth powers. Okay, so for instance, a number like 
241 to the fourth power. Okay, and remember this is just 241 times 241 times 241 times 241. Okay, and if you actually throw this number into a calculator, you get 3,373,402,561. Okay, so he knew this number by heart, exactly as it is. And this is just one example. Okay, he also knew this to the fifth and to the sixth powers, and even a number as crazy as 337 to the sixth power, which if you put this into a calculator, it's something like 15 digits long. Okay, so he could remember all kinds of things that most normal people struggle to remember. Okay, and then one of Euler's most lasting contributions is a lot of our modern notation comes from him. Okay, things like the notation for a function, f of x, or the symbol for the number e, or the symbol for the square root of negative numbers, i, and the symbol for pi, were all selected by Euler. Also, the symbol for sum, summations, and our symbols for the trigonometric functions, like the sine of some angle theta, and the cosine of some angle theta, okay and many more and if you flip to the back of basically any calculus textbook you'll see a lot of Euler's name in the back of the book okay so this concludes the biography of one of the greatest mathematicians of all time and to be honest you could really only put Euler in a category with a few other people you could easily make an argument that Euler was one of the smartest people who's ever lived possibly in the top five of all of humanity.